and that when the news is on, you run the kinds of programs that people want to watch. I th you were quoted as saying that. Well, we interview. try and run something different. That's right, a, we count a program. But, but you're not against doing television news, are you? Well, I wouldn't be doing a 24-hour news channel if I didn't. If I was against television news, I was. I was opposed as a UHF independent station in Atlanta. I was opposed to having a, a big news staff there to cover the local news that all the other channels in town uh, cover so well. So, you know, it wasn't that I was out of step necessarily. I was just marching to a different tune. Mm -hmm. But then you don't think you've kind of changed your tune on news because you used to kind of make fun of it and put it down. Well, I don't there. like there's certain aspects. And one of the things we're going to do with, with our news network is we're going to present the good side of the news too. Uh, television news is primarily a show where, of sensationalism like other things as they get as much violence and death and earthquakes, flood, pestilence, you know, they really should open the news in the evening with the four horsemen of the apocalypse riding out, you know. Uh, but we're going to cover both sides. We're going to try and uh, give people a little bit of some of the good things that happen in the world. Have too. you got any good things that you know about the oh, last I know couple a of days? Lot of, yes. I mean, your, your fellow Georgian, Jimmy Carter, is at Camp David. Nobody's heard from him. Well, well he's that, working. That's probably good. He's, you know, in other words, he's, he's listening and not talking. And uh, he'll probably come up with a good program. I think he's a pretty smart guy. Mm -hmm. Do you know him at all? Sure. I mean, I'm from Atlanta. Well, all right. Are you, a little, was, are you a little surprised by the cancellation of the speech last week, and now they're going down to Camp David and listening to all the people coming in? Well, I mean, it's a very, very difficult job that he has, and I don't, uh, in my, I have enough troubles running my own ranch. I don't worry too much about his. I think he's doing the best he can. He's trying real hard, and uh, yeah, it's a job right now. We have, to, we have to back our leaders up because they've got some very difficult decisions to make that are, are going to affect us because we, as a nation, have been living beyond our means and the time has come to pay the piper. This is the man who said the way to get the oil into the United States is for the Russians and the United States to take over the OPEC nations and divide them up between us? This is the man who once said that is now saying we have to pay the piper and follow the leader? I don't believe that. Well, I mean, you know, I say a lot of things just like you do. You know, I, a lot of times I'm telling jokes, but that would be a... <laughs> <laughs> That's a what a great joke. Let's practical. go World War III, huh? So, what a practical joke there. Well, we, we certainly don't want to fight with the Russians. No, no, but what about if we and the Russians went and got the Arabs? Well, I think we ought to be friendly with the Russians. I think that uh, in the long run, we've never been natural enemies with the Russians. Uh, and uh, I don't think we, we, we're not natural enemies with the Russians. The, the real crisis that's going to come in the next 20 years is one where the nations uh, that aren't controlling their population, like Mexico and Brazil and China and India, between the nations that have food and those that don't. And the Russians really have pretty good food growing capability as Canada and the United States do. And uh, I think that we're going to end up on the same side before it's over. I think all this arms race with Russia is just crazy, a waste of their money and ours that we ought to be very close allies of, of theirs because we don't want what they've got and I don't really think they want what we've got either. No, they don't want gas lines, I can tell you That's that. That's right. We they don't have cars, so they don't have any gas <laughs> yeah. lines. We still take, but gas lines, <laughs> right. have, leave us have those. Uh, would you ever want to be a, uh, in politics? Well, I, uh, I think I can do more good with what I'm doing now. I think... Uh, no, but would you ever want to be? Does the idea have any appeal to, you know, you know the millions of people cheering Ted Turner? Come uh, on, Ted. Go, Ted. I've been, I've gotten enough cheers and boos for one lifetime. <laughs> so that means Ted Turner has no affinity. Well, I don't, uh, I, I, I've got, I mean, I'm trying to build two networks at once right now. But I'll I think I've got, I think I've got my work cut out for the next five or ten years. I'm not, I, I'm not, uh, one of the big mistakes that anybody can make is to bite off more than they can chew. And mm -hmm. I've bitten off just about all I can chew right now. So mm -hmm. I've. I'm not concerned what I'm going to be doing 10 years from now. I've got to get this, the job at hand done. But here I am offering you the vice presidency tonight. <laughs> and <laughs> you're telling oh, me. Yeah, I'm going to run, <laughs> you're running late. Huh? <laughs> well, that's a possibility. <laughs> yes, it is. Anything's a possibility. You never rule anything out. Where do you come? You come from Atlanta, and you are from a family that had an outdoor advertising company. As a kid, I read you used to nail up the billboards. And right. You worked for your dad in Atlanta, and you started really well, Savannah and Charleston. We, we didn't uh, move to Atlanta until I was, uh, I moved when I was 24 years old. What brought you to the television station? Well, I, in the outdoor advertising business, uh, in the 50s and uh, 
in the early 60s and middle 60s, I saw so much of the advertising business was going to television that I figured I ought to get in on the act. And the only thing I could get was a couple of bankrupt UHF stations, and so that's what I got. And I tried to make them better. Mm -hmm. And what brought you to the superstation idea, putting it on the satellite and getting well, it? Well, the, the Federal Communications Commission has... Uh, been encouraging, uh, and, and I think rightly so, the growth of cable because that represents the potential of 30 or 40 channels of entertainment and information instead of the three or four that there are now. And uh, I thought that was a good thing, and uh, I could see that that, that that was the way Washington was headed, so I figured I'd be in on the next technological wave that occurred in the telecommunications industry. And and uh, I studied studied real hard and worked nights, and figured it all out before anybody else figured it out. And when did you position yourself against the television networks? You've been very critical of the television well, networks. Well, I really, and you're, and you're fighting I, I became critical of the television networks when, when they uh, ganged up together with the National Association of Broadcasters and tried to uh, steamroll a Congress into putting us out of business uh, this spring. That's when I became critical because it was either fight or die. And uh, I've been down in Washington doing a lot of fighting down there, and uh, I think successfully, too. Before Dan Shore joins us, about the, the baseball team, sure. the sports team, do you wish, well, of course you wish you would have had more success. We've been with, successful lately. With the Atlanta Braves. I mean, in terms of bringing a World Series or a pennant to the Atlanta Braves. And that hasn't happened. What have you learned from the experience? Can you spot mistakes that maybe you as the owner of the club have made along the way that might have contributed to their performance? In well, the not, not really, but baseball, our basketball team uh, came very close to beating the Washington Bullets in the semifinals uh, last, last year, and that was only after three years. And uh, our baseball team, we've been building up real fast, and we're doing uh, extremely well right now, and uh, we could be in the World Series next year. You, you can't turn a baseball organization around in just a year or two because mm -hmm. you've got to, uh, it takes a long time because you've got to have the players, you've got to build them up to your farm system if you don't have the wealth of George Steinbrenner or, you know, where you can go out and buy everybody. How do you feel about the concept of buying a team? I don't, well, you buy a team when you buy one. Let's say that you had the money that you could offer Reggie Jackson and you could offer uh, 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 the fellow who went out to the Angels uh, in the America, uh, Rod, Carew. Rod Carew, or a Tommy John who came from Los Angeles to New York. If you had that kind of money, would you pay that kind of money to assemble Well, a I tried to get Tommy John, uh, and he said the main reason he didn't come with us is because he's uh, up in, you know, nearing the end of his career. He's... Uh, one of the older players, he and Pete Rose. I tried to get uh, both of them, but they they thought that uh, it would be better playing with teams that they thought had a better chance of being in the World Series right now. I think if both of them had been younger, I would have gotten them both. I think uh, uh, it's, 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 it, I don't think it's really right, but you've got to uh, play by the rules of the game. I just can't sit down there and poor mouth all the time. We've been paying our players pretty good dough. Have you said at one time that you felt a baseball player should make 30000 or 40000 a year? In no, this? I never said that. I, I don't think that they ought to make 15 times as much as a United States senator or 50 times as much as a high school principal. I think, that, uh, uh, I think that the baseball salaries are too high in relationship to what uh, other people and some of the TV personalities' salaries are too high, too. But, <laughs> but that's the way but it goes, Ted. I you think know? it's just a sign of the sickness of the times that we live in, and I think that uh, the recession that's coming is maybe going to weed some of it out. I think we've gotten the, our whole emphasis in this country has uh, gotten a little wacky away from what's really important into things that aren't, aren't as important, and I think that that's one reason that we're suffering right now and that we're going to suffer more until we get back on the right track, and I think we'll get back on the right track. I think most people, even the baseball players, think it's a little out of whack. They're pretty smart guys. They'll, they'll take the money if it's there, but I think, uh, and like anyone will, but I mean, you know, normally you would have been happy a few years ago to make $100,000 a year instead of a million. But, you, you too. Know, you that's too. right. You I mean, I'm happy. I want as much as I can get to, I guess, but on the other hand... I mean, you uh, know, as long as you're sitting here talking about it, you peddled off that dog UHF down in the Carolinas for $20 million to Westinghouse, so, I mean, let's not... But that's... I had to get the money from somewhere to start the news network. That money's all going back in. I'm not taking a dime of that. Five million of it's going to go to Uncle Sam I, to I, help I, the balance of payments. <laughs> yeah, take care Capital of the old... Capital gains yeah, yeah, tax, and then the other $15 million will go to start the but news But, I mean, network. let's not make believe that Ted Turner, Turner is a poor man. Oh, oh absolutely no, no. not. Absolutely not. Ab I didn't say I was. I just, I just think that uh, 
that, uh, I mean, that you're certain work people in our society are probably making more than they should vis-a-vis -vis other people who have great responsibilities that aren't being paid enough. I agree, and I will admit to being one of those people. I like you. I, I like you. I, I, I like you back, and uh, and I think that probably you might be paid more in the scheme of things to, in terms of your contribution to society. I quite agree with you, but I didn't. Well, my salary and all that much. I mean, I've done pretty well for my business investments, but. Uh, uh, but I'm putting it all back in, too. I mean, I'm not running off with a whole lot of it. Me neither. I'm putting mine in the business. Are you yeah, kidding? But you pay a lot of taxes, too. Bet your life. I help the balance of trade. That's right. You, boy, when, I, when I go out and see all the new subway cars in New York, I say, there goes some of mine right That's there. Right. Yes, sir. We'll be right back now. Daniel Shore will join us, and I want to talk about the News Network, which is not Channel 17. It's kind of something completely right. separate and apart. Right. We'll continue after these announcements from the NBC television stations. Joining us now is Mr. Daniel Shore, who is no stranger to people who watch television news or who read newspaper columns in this country. How did you uh, run into Ted Turner and become linked up with him? That strikes me as being an odd, or struck me as being an odd marriage at the time. So it struck me the same way, I must tell you, that uh, when my uh, business agent called up and said that Ted Turner was interested in me, I found it difficult to believe we come from totally different worlds, I guess, north, south, uh, different interests. Um, and I couldn't believe it at first until finally he said, uh, look, I'm going to be in Las Vegas for a cable convention. Um, and I don't think there's anything we can't settle by talking to each other. Come on out here. And if it doesn't work, uh, you fly back. If it does work, I have a press conference scheduled for 4.30 on that day, and I'd like you to be there with me. Mm -hmm. And with a great many misgivings still, went out there and walked in, met him for the first time at 9.30 in the morning. We talked. We talked some more at lunch. Uh, he convinced me that uh, no matter what I knew about Channel 17 and its counter-programming against news and so on, that this was a different ball game, and that he was very serious about it. And uh, the money was right, since there's been a lot of talk about money so far. I'm not going to ask you about that. I don't, that's none of my business. It's none of anybody's business. Uh, the only people who ask you and I how much money we make are people who write about us. Right. No uh, viewer has ever come to me in the street and say, how much money do you have? I mean, that's ridiculous. That's a crazy time. Right. Anyway, so... In any event, uh, uh, I, I first had to learn about cable television, which I don't know a lot about, and I began to read about it, grasp the idea, and I thought there was a concept there. I thought the concept would fly. I thought there was a chance to do something that uh, has never really been possible to do, oddly enough, in over-the-air network television. That is, to be able to put on news without ever having to go beg the time from something else that was going mm -hmm. on at the same time. If you're dealing in cable television going to one channel in each town, uh, you just do news. And that was a great thing. It's like being in, back in the newspaper business. You are not competing with yourself or with anything else that happens on television. And I saw a great opportunity to join what looks like a wave of the future at my advanced age. And I thought, let's give it a whirl. Give it a go. Give it a shot. As you've talked to him more and more, do you like him better? Yes. I do. I'll, I'll put myself well, on the Well, uh, this first. is a tough thing to say, and uh, I am known for not liking my bosses. And the last time I was on this show was to tell about my reservations about where I worked and all. But uh, the answer is yes. And uh, what I begin to realize is that uh, we're separated by a different accent and a different uh, origin. And then I begin to realize that that uh, as Turner talks, he uses throwaway lines, and behind that is an intense seriousness of purpose. And more than that, what I've begun to learn about him <laughs> you know, is that there's a very cultured gentleman behind all of this. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you put on 24 hours a day for news? You don't have Dan Shore up there 24 oh, hours no. a day, obviously. So Not where does he fit? Overtime. Where, <laughs> overtime, right? <laughs> where does he fit in in your plan? And then what's on the rest of the time? And I know it's premature to say, "Give me the 24 hours," but some. Well, you we, know, we've got a wheel. We, right, we've got a wheel worked out. Uh, it. it uh, we're going to cover business news in greater depth than it's been covered in the past. We're going to cover sports news in greater depth with. We're going to try and get footage from uh, all the major games around the country and present them each night. Uh, and we're going to have little features and horoscopes and things for the women during the, during the daytime. And uh, really, there's going to be, uh, looking at it, I want to do a lot of 60-minutes uh, type uh, of programming and issues and answers type programming, too, that we'll be able to get in on the weekends. And really, they're... Uh, 
you've got to remember we're going to be in uh, seven or eight time zones because this this program will be available from the Virgin Islands and uh, Puerto Rico all the way to Alaska and Hawaii in the four time zones in the United States. So it's uh, it's got to be really 24 live hours. Live everywhere. It'll be live. It'll mm -hmm. all be delayed, the, so You don't have to, that. no delays, mm -hmm. because you're not worried about other kinds of programming. So Everything it's will be continuous. It won't be like the NBC Evening News. It's three hours later on the West Coast. It's New York. It'll all be simultaneous. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't, we, we, we feel like we don't have enough time in the day to cover it all. We're, and we don't expect anyone to stay with us all day long. Of course you know, be not. Able, it's like all news radio only okay, so expanded then, format. Then, then it's okay that, that, like one of the stations says, if you listen to us for 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. And then at the half hour hour, they start over again, updating, uh, recapping if that's necessary. That'll be kind of a part of your presentation then. But, well, but we're a little bit different. Go ahead, Dan. Well, you, you, so you're talking all news radio, which is basically local. There is, all new, there is no all news radio network, so that you will get on all news radio a constant recapping and uh, news tends to get repeated and all of this. With an all news network, which uses the technology which is lying out there just waiting to be exploited, the combination of the satellite technology, the microwaves from one place to another. What it means is that when something happens that's very important at the Pentagon, you, you start there, you put it on live, you just say, we're going with the Pentagon, there's something there happening, or the White House, or whatever, and there is an enormous fascination with what happens now. Uh, the result is that if you have something like today, the Senate started uh, its uh, hearings on SALT Treaty, right? Uh, you get that now on public television, in some stations, not many, and on national public radio. A cable news network will have the capacity to be able to drop anything it's doing. And if it's important enough and go in and say, we go in live, we put out a microwave signal, we've sent it out by satellite, and it's all over the country right then and there. Mm -hmm. Now this will be on cable. Right, only on cable. It won't be a broadcast station anywhere, so we'll really have, have two networks. That's the plan. Like, like an AM, FM uh, combination on radio. But I'm hazy. Now, WTCG, that goes up on the satellite and then is distributed to cable operators. Right. How does the news network get to the satellite? It's it, going to go... It, it, it'll it will, go direct. It won't go It'll go direct. It won't come off, of, off a tower or anywhere. There'll be a microwave feed right out to the Earth Station in Atlanta and, 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 and in Washington and New York and where other bureaus are and go straight from there. It'll go straight to the satellite without being a broadcast signal anywhere. When did you germinate this idea? I well, mean, I've been you, thinking oh, about you know, it because for years. Forgive me, but you've had, uh, you've had a wild and crazy past, you know, with the boat and the press conference and Ted Turner, the man who tells the jokes and is the, the funny man and is the entrepreneur in Atlanta. And all of a sudden, you've got a really serious project on your hands here. Well, well what everything I've done has been, uh, has been serious. I just think that, uh, you know, I've tried to cheer people up when they get depressed and... And when they're in a good mood, I think that's the time that you tell them the serious stuff. You know, I, I've got, you know. You know what he reminds me of? He can't say this about himself, but I guess I can. Uh, I've been reading Bill Paley's uh, autobiography. And even in his own autobiography, which is, doesn't tell the whole story of Paley and CBS, but even in his own autobiography, you will learn that there was a Paley who decided he didn't want to be in the cigar business and he wanted to be in the radio business and he saw possibilities and he first went in for entertainment mm -hmm. and he had this great sense of Jack Benny or I'm going to get Bing Crosby and all of that and after a while, it didn't happen originally, but after a while he saw a possibility in news and when he saw the possibility in news and getting a couple of people who could help him with that, Bill Paley became in charge of what was the greatest news operation in radio. But it didn't happen at the beginning. It was somebody who had made a few million dollars in entertainment and then saw something else on the horizon. I think that this man is about where Bill Paley was somewhere in the late 1920s. That's a, very, that's a big compliment to him, by the way. Very big compliment. But he sees it. It is not, I think he's serious about news and so on, but he also has an enormous business instinct. It's entertainment, they're going to be getting it from their video disc or whatever. The coming thing is news. He sees it. What has been my life is to him a good business proposition, and that's why we're together. All right. Now, I want to find out two things. What brought you to Daniel Shore? And then what actually are you going to do? Because I think you're the anchor man, or, or if, if that's... No, the, uh, the anchor... Uh, well, but i got to do commercials first, okay? Do commercials. We'll be right back with Daniel Shore and Ted Turner after these words from our sponsors. 
What brought you to Daniel Shore? Well, first, the first uh, person that uh, we, we engaged was Reese Seanfield, who's uh, president of the Independent Television News Network. And sitting down right away, we, we decided we wanted uh, someone with a lot of experience to be in Washington, where most of the national news and, emanates from. And, and prestige. That's right. And a good reputation. And a fine person, somebody that, uh, that we'd be proud to have associated with us, some of um, impeccable character. And uh, wait a minute. <clears throat> okay, go, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, I believe that. I believe that. Thank you. I think that uh, you're a very, very honest and forthright person, and so that was we came settled on that very quickly in the ball game, and we knew that uh, Mr. Shaw was might be available, so that helped a lot too. Now I said anchorman, and you said no, 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 not exactly. What will your duties well, be? Uh, because, as I understand it, the anchor. The basic anchor will be in Atlanta. The show will originate. Well, I, what we didn't say is that aside from a 24-hour news service, the centerpiece of it all will be a two-hour every evening newscast running from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and that will be where I'll devote my main attention to. I will be anchoring the Washington side of it. So it'll be a co-anchor with whoever is anchoring in Atlanta, a person I think still to be chosen. Right. Who are you looking at? Well, we're looking at a lot of people. We're going to hire a couple hundred people to start with, and uh, we're going to have a big bureau and studios here in New York and in Washington, probably in Chicago and L.A. too. And some foreign. We're not starting till next June 1 is our yeah, launch date. Yeah, but so. uh, boy, that's less than a year from now, and you're talking staffing bureaus, and you're talking... We're getting going. Hiring correspondents, you're talking right. crews, you're talking videotape facilities, EJ, electronic journalism facilities, We're film facilities. We're ordering equipment right now. We'll, wow. Nothing to it. Are, are you working for him now? I am on his payroll now. Okay, and so what? You're, what, what do you, how do you think you're going to evolve this thing? Like, what, what do you want to do? What does Dan Shore want to do for the cable news network? What do you want to bring to it? Well, and I know I this is premature, but you know... I, well, nothing is premature. There are basically about two or three things I want to bring to it. First of all, I want to bring to it news at greater depth and at greater length than over-the-air television can physically give it. If you've got a half hour today, which some people are trying to make into an hour, but without any signal success so far, mm -hmm. here is two hours, never mind the fact you can go live all day, tape all that live stuff, edit it. Uh, you can get correspondence at the White House, at the, at the Pentagon, to put together their pieces and tell them, you need three minutes, you need five minutes, take five minutes. We're dealing with people who want news. We're not trying to stuff it down their throats. Mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna, if they're interested, they will watch it. When you've finished your piece with the tape, with the actuality and so on, stay there. I want to talk to you. I got three more questions to ask you, but where it goes from here, what's going to happen tomorrow, and all the rest of it. So what you'll get in the first place is a more relaxed uh, sense of what the world is about every day. Secondly, we will develop our own things. We will be able in that time to go out and do things which may be considered marginal. Uh, Ted talks about things he calls good news. It may not be always good news, but it'll be the kind of news which isn't the headline news. There's a certain amount of news which is automatic, which you've right. got to do. Right, the predictable. When you're making your contribution is when you find out what people don't want to tell you or get the kind of news on that nobody thought of holding a press conference about because you are the enterprise to go out and get it. That's what we want to give them. Mm -hmm. Good luck. And a lot of people, including this one, will be watching. It's a, it's a massive undertaking, but you, 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 know, you know what you're doing. You'll do it. You will do it. Well, I listen. I, I'm, I don't have a big news background, but... Uh, well, you will I, have. That's right. Well, that's exactly that's why I've got people like Dan to give me a hand. All right. Thank you both for being here tonight. Good, Good to see you here. again, Daniel Shore. Always a pleasure, Mr. Ted Turner. You bet, Tommy. We will continue after these announcements from the NBC television stations.